Story number one, Night of Terror, the Halloween heist that ended in tragedy. It was supposed to be an unforgettable Halloween night. Mateo and his friends, Ava, Jamie, and Eli, had spent weeks preparing for their grand Halloween party. Mateo's parents were away on a long-awaited vacation, leaving him in charge of their sprawling house in a quiet Los Angeles suburb. The place was decked out in cobwebs, flickering lights, and carved pumpkins. Guests in elaborate costumes arrived in droves, filling the house with laughter and energy. The evening started with music pounding through the walls, echoing through the neighborhood. Everyone was dancing, sharing ghost stories, and taking endless selfies in their costumes. Mateo, dressed as a vampire, was in high spirits, joking with Ava, who looked stunning as a dark fairy. Eli, a comic book enthusiast, had gone all out as his favorite superhero, while Jamie sported a clever werewolf costume. As midnight approached, the party was at its peak. That's when the nightmare began. The front door burst open with a loud bang, sending a wave of silence through the crowd. Three figures stormed in, each one masked and dressed in black from head to toe. Their masks were bone-white skulls, grinning with a sinister edge. The tallest intruder brandished a gun, his voice cutting through the terrified hush as he shouted, Everybody down! Now, panic erupted. Screams filled the air as guests threw themselves to the ground, clutching each other in fear. The intruders moved through the sea of terrified partygoers, demanding phones, wallets, and jewelry. One of them, shorter but equally menacing, kicked over a table of drinks, glass shattering everywhere. The gunman trained his weapon on anyone who hesitated, and every small movement felt like a gamble between life and death. Ava, trembling, clutched Mateo's hand as they lay on the living room floor. Eli tried to calm Jamie, whose breathing had turned into frantic, shallow gasps. Mateo could feel his heart pounding against his ribcage, the adrenaline coursing through his veins like fire. But the worst moment was yet to come, as one of the masked figures rifled through a guest's belongings. A commotion erupted near the back of the house. Someone had tried to make a break for it. The gunman turned, fury blazing in his eyes, and fired a deafening shot. The bullet found its mark. A young man, dressed as a pirate, fell to the floor, blood pooling around him. Screams echoed in every corner of the house, now a place of terror and chaos. The intruders fled, vanishing into the night before anyone could react. The once festive home was now a scene of horror, filled with the sobs of friends clinging to each other. Mateo felt paralyzed, his mind struggling to process what had just unfolded. Ava was in shock, her dark fairy wings crumpled and tear-streaked makeup staining her face. Police sirens pierced the air minutes later, but it felt like an eternity. EMTs rushed in and the party became a blur of flashing lights, crying guests, and emergency responders. The night had turned from a celebration to a tragedy that no one would ever forget. That Halloween party left scars far deeper than any could see. For Mateo and his friends, it wasn't just about survival. It was the haunting memory of a night that went horribly wrong. A reminder of how fragile life truly is. Story number two, the Halloween knocks that turned deadly. It was a quiet Halloween night in the sleepy town of Maplewood. Emma Lopez had just finished handing out candy to the last group of trick-or-treaters. The streets were now eerily silent, and a chilly breeze rustled the dried leaves that littered the front lawn. Emma closed the door and locked it, relieved to finally enjoy some peace. At 17, 
she was spending the evening home alone while her parents visited friends out of town. With her phone in hand and a bowl of leftover candy, she settled onto the couch, ready to binge her favorite horror movies. Just as the opening credits rolled, a loud knock echoed through the house. Emma jumped, her heart skipping a beat. She checked her phone. 11, 45 p.m. It was way too late for more trick-or-treaters. Nervously, she approached the front door, peeking through the peephole. No one was there. Probably some prank, she muttered, trying to shake off the unease. She turned back toward the living room. But before she could get comfortable, the knock came again, this time louder and more insistent. Goosebumps crawled up her arms. Emma hesitated, then threw open the front door, hoping to scare off whoever was trying to mess with her. But the porch was empty. The street was shrouded in darkness, with only a flickering streetlight down the block casting long, eerie shadows. Emma's stomach tightened. She closed the door, double-checking the lock, and tried to laugh off the fear creeping up her spine. She texted her best friend, Lily. Weird stuff happening. Someone keeps knocking and vanishing. Lily replied with a laughing emoji. It's Halloween. Chill, Em. Probably just kids having fun. Emma sighed, attempting to focus on her movie. But her mind refused to settle. Moments later, a soft tapping sounded from the back door in the kitchen. Her body froze pulse racing. The knocks were rhythmic, slow, and deliberate. Emma grabbed a kitchen knife and slowly made her way to the back door. With trembling hands, she pulled aside the curtain on the door's small window. Once again, there was nothing, just the dark outline of the woods behind her house. She stepped away from the door, her mind racing. Get a grip, Emma, she whispered but her voice felt hollow, unconvincing. Then, the lights went out, the house plunged into darkness, and Emma's breath came in short, panicked gasps. She fumbled for her phone, using its flashlight to illuminate the pitch-black room. Before she could call for help, a thud resonated from upstairs. Someone was in the house. Emma stifled a scream, heart pounding in her ears. She backed into a corner of the kitchen, clutching the knife tighter. Another noise followed, this time the unmistakable creak of floorboards. Moving closer, tears streamed down her face as she tried to steady her shaking hands. Suddenly, her phone buzzed, nearly making her drop it. It was a text from an unknown number. Knock, knock. Emma's blood ran cold. Whoever was in her house knew she was terrified. Summoning every ounce of courage, she made a run for the front door, flinging it open and sprinting into the street. Her screams echoed down the empty road until lights flickered on in neighboring houses. Later, the police found her trembling in a neighbor's living room. They searched Emma's house, but found no sign of anyone, no footprints, no evidence of forced entry, just the lingering fear and the unsettling memory of the knocks that turned Halloween night into a nightmare she'd never forget. Story number three, the shadow that followed us on Halloween night in the small, close-knit town of Cold Hollow. Halloween was always a time of celebration. Kids ran through the streets in costumes, laughter echoing through the crisp October air. This year, 13-year-old Elena had dressed up as a vampire, complete with fake blood and a flowing black cape. Her younger brother, Noah, wore a classic ghost costume, and their friend Sam was decked out as a pirate, eye patch and all. Their parents had given them permission to trick-or-treat until nine, and the trio was determined to make the most of it. Bags already heavy with candy, 
they decided to hit a few more houses before heading home. As they strolled down Maplewood Avenue, the streetlights cast long, shadowy figures that danced along the pavement. They were approaching an old, vacant-looking house at the end of the street when Sam stopped. Hey, did you see that? He whispered, pointing to a figure standing by the oak tree across the road. Elena squinted into the shadows and saw him, a man in a dark suit, wearing a cracked porcelain mask, the kind you'd see at a masquerade ball. The mask's painted grin seemed to mock them. He's probably just someone trying to scare us, Elena said. Though her voice wavered, Noah clung to her cape, his small hand trembling. The figure didn't move, and his silence was unnerving. They exchanged uneasy glances and decided to skip the house, walking quickly to the next street. But as they rounded the corner, Elena glanced back. The masked man was following them, his pace slow and deliberate. He lingered just far enough behind to keep them on edge. Okay, this is seriously creepy, Sam muttered, adjusting his eye patch nervously. Elena's heart raced, but she forced herself to stay calm for Noah's sake. Let's head to the Johnson's house, she suggested. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson always hosted a massive Halloween party, and the yard was filled with people. Safety in numbers, she reasoned. They sped up, practically dragging Noah along. When they reached the Johnson's house, Elena breathed a sigh of relief. Kids and parents crowded the yard. Music blared from speakers, and the smell of caramel apples filled the air. For a moment, they felt safe. But then, Elena turned around and saw the masked man standing at the edge of the yard, just outside the glow of the party lights. He tilted his head, as if amused by their fear. Elena's hands clenched into fists. This wasn't a prank anymore. Stay here, she whispered to Noah and Sam, her voice shaking. She approached Mr. Johnson, a burly man dressed as Frankenstein. Excuse me, sir, she said. There's a man following us. He's wearing a mask and he won't leave us alone. Mr. Johnson's jovial expression hardened. Stay with the group, he instructed. He walked toward the masked man, but as soon as he did, the figure melted into the shadows, vanishing without a sound. The rest of the night was a blur. The police were called, but they found nothing. No footprints, no sign that anyone had been there. Yet the fear lingered, clinging to Elena's skin like a cold mist. For days after, she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, and every Halloween since, she'd remember the masked man who followed them through Cold Hollow, a silent shadow that turned a night of fun into a haunting memory. Story number four, the terrifying Jeep that almost took us Halloween night in the bustling town of Edgewater was always full of excitement. Streets lined with pumpkins, the smell of autumn leaves in the air, and the laughter of kids running from house to house, collecting their sugary spoils. Fourteen-year-old Maya and her best friend Lisa had planned this night for weeks. Dressed as a witch and a werewolf, the two friends were ready for a night they'd never forget. Little did they know, this Halloween would haunt them forever. They had filled their candy bags quickly and decided to venture a bit further from their usual trick-or-treating route into the quieter part of town where the houses were more spaced out. As they walked down Birchwood Lane, a narrow street with tall, shadowy trees, the festive energy seemed to thin out. The street lights flickered, and an unsettling quiet wrapped around them. Maya laughed nervously. Okay, maybe we should turn back, she suggested, her voice wavering. Lisa, always the fearless one, shook her head. Just one more block, 
she urged. I bet the houses over there have the best candy. Before Maya could protest, the quiet was shattered by the low rumble of an engine. A faded green jeep rolled up beside them, its windows tinted so dark that they couldn't see the people inside. The jeep slowed, matching their pace. Maya and Lisa exchanged worried glances, their unease growing with every second. The passenger window rolled down with a mechanical hiss. A man's voice called out, Hey girls, need a ride somewhere? His tone was disturbingly cheerful, and Maya's stomach twisted with dread. She couldn't see the man's face clearly, but she could make out the shadow of a baseball cap and a sinister grin. No, thank you, Lisa replied, trying to sound brave, but her voice cracked. The jeep didn't drive away. Instead, it inched closer. Maya's hand clutched Lisa's, their candy bags forgotten. The man in the jeep laughed. Come on, it's not safe out here, he said, and the doors clicked open. Another man, burly and wearing a ski mask, stepped halfway out of the back seat, his eyes cold and calculating. Run! Maya screamed, and the two friends bolted down the street. Their legs pumped with adrenaline, feet pounding against the pavement as they weaved through front lawns and leapt over hedges. The jeep roared behind them, tires screeching as it followed. Heart racing, Maya spotted a house with its porch light still on. There, she shouted, dragging Lisa up the driveway. They burst onto the porch, pounding on the front door. An elderly woman opened it, her eyes widening at the sight of two terrified teenagers. What's going on? she asked. But Maya and Lisa could only point back toward the street. The jeep had stopped at the end of the driveway. For a moment, it just sat there, the engine idling, as if considering its next move. Then, without warning, it sped off into the night, vanishing around the corner. The woman ushered them inside and called the police, who arrived minutes later. But by then, the jeep was long gone, leaving behind only the echo of its engine and the terror it had caused. Maya and Lisa never ventured to that part of town again, and every Halloween since, they couldn't help but remember the green jeep and the men who almost took them away. The fear lingered, a haunting reminder that the scariest monsters don't always wear masks. Make sure to subscribe for more terrifying stories and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. Don't forget to like, comment, and share these stories with your friends to keep the spooky spirit alive.